Hey, what is going on guys? Clickwood here back again with another video. And today guys, what I want to talk to you about is the breaking news that just happened in the NFL maybe about two hours ago now. Tom Brady and the New England Patriots are both going to face penalties for their involvement in deflate gate, as it's being called. Um, basically what happened in the NFL, uh, it was the AFC Championship game last year against the uh, Indianapolis Colts, where the Patriots absolutely kicked the crap out of the Colts. But there was an investigation after the game which showed that the Patriots footballs that they had on their sidelines and were used in the game were underinflated based off of the current regulations that the NFL has. Now, what has since happened is that the NFL went in and did an investigation. They have since found that there is very strong evidence that the Patriots knowingly and willingly did violate this rule, so they are going to face penalties for it. Now, Tom Brady's involvement has been that he supposedly sent text messages to the ball boy, and they were kind. They didn't specifically say anything about deflating the ball, but they were kind of hinting toward that, I guess. And the NFL has since decided to suspend Tom Brady for four games. They are also going to fine the Patriots $1 million, and also, they are going to take away a first-round NFL draft pick next year for the 2016 draft, as well as a fourth-round pick for the 2017 draft. So, pretty strict penalties. Uh, they're definitely go coming down hard on the Patriots. This is not the first time that the Patriots have, of course, been involved in some sort of a controversy. They were also involved in the Spygate controversy a few years back, again, when they were extremely successful that year. Uh, there were there were accusations that they were recording other teams' practices, and I guess that was since found out to be true. Now, the problem that I have with this uh, not only is the fact that yes, the Patriots did underinflate the footballs, and it does not seem like there's any real reason to believe that they did that without knowledge uh, that it was an accident. It does seem like it was intentional. Um, of course. You know, you know, of course, now you're going to have fans of other teams, people that don't like the Patriots, people that hate Tom Brady, people that hate Bill Belichick, claiming that this is the reason that they won games. It's pr completely preposterous to say that, okay, guys? Um, that is uh, that is completely ridiculous to even uh, to even go with whatsoever. The fact is is that the Patriots won the football game against the Colts by what thirty eight points? I think was the final difference. Uh, yeah, an underinflated football is not going to make thirty eight points of a difference. I'm sorry, it's just not. The Colts scored seven points in that game. That had nothing to do with the Patriots' footballs. It just doesn't. So the truth is, is that the Patriots would have won that game either way against the Colts. So let's not go there. Let's not act like there should be some sort of asterisk next to the Patriots' legacy or anything like that. That's ridiculous. Now, I do not have a problem necessarily with the Patriots getting in trouble over this. Yes, they broke the rules, okay? Now, the NFL has strict rules about these things, and they should follow their own rule book. If you're going to have a rule on the books, you have to follow it. Just in the same way that if there's face masking on the field, you have to you have to go after the players. You have to penalize them. And if it's something where it's a blatant infringement on the rules, and they're intentionally doing it, you have to be stricter about it. Even if it's an accident, you still have to go after these teams and keep them within the rules. I get it, okay? I understand that. Now, the problem that I have is that people are coming out here and acting like it's the Patriots and only the Patriots, okay? It's not. I hate to burst the bubble, but this is common practice in the NFL. If you go around and you actually research this whole situation, other NFL quarterbacks, not ones that are currently in the, in the NFL that I'm aware of, but former NFL quarterbacks have talked about that this is a very common thing in the NFL. And guys that have recently been retired, Matt Leinart, for example, I know everybody's going to laugh. Oh, Matt Leinart sucked anyways. Why does it matter what the, the football was inflated? He barely got to play anyways. The truth is, is that Matt Leiner, whether or not he suited up or not, was still in there in the practices. He was still in there for the games. He was still preparing with these footballs. He practiced with these footballs before the game. He knows what the situation is with these footballs. He played for more than one team. I mean, Matt Leinart is an NFL quarterback, okay? And same thing with Jeff Blake, who played for, I don't even know, 10, 12, 14. I don't remember how long. He's, I think he started over 100 games in the NFL. He talked about how this is common practice in the NFL. Now, of course, Jeff Blake played years ago, but still, the point remains that this is not something that's new, okay? And other coaches have come out and talked about that they were involved with spying on other teams' practices. These things are not 
rare in the NFL. The problem is that the Patriots are overly cocky about it. That's basically what I've come to the determination of. They don't seem to care that they're breaking these rules. They don't try to hide it like other teams do. They don't even act like they're rules. They just do it because other teams do. And that's what's going to get them hit in this case. And that's what got them hit during Spygate. Other teams may have admitted to spying on practices, but at the same time, they were not caught spying on practices. So they're not going to be penalized for it. So my personal opinion here is that the NFL is going to go through some changes with the PSI level of footballs. You might see some quarterbacks have some improvement to their game uh, in terms of like in comparison to other quarterbacks because you're actually going to see maybe some of these other quarterbacks like a Brady, for example, who might be used to having a lower PSI range on his footballs have to use a PSI range that's higher that's within the rule book and that might see his uh, his actual attributes or his, his statistics drop a little bit. And uh, when that happens, you're going to see maybe some of these other quarterbacks that maybe weren't performing quite as well in comparison start to even that gap just a little bit. And I don't think it's going to be a drastic difference. I don't think you're going to see Tom Brady going from MVP level numbers to being an average quarterback. I still think he's going to be an elite level quarterback and maybe some of these other guys as well that may also suffer from this situation because the NFL is going to start to really look at these footballs a lot harder, I think, this season. Um, But like I said, you are going to see, I think, a little bit of a difference in those types of things. But I don't want people out there talking about how this is the difference between Tom Brady being an elite-level quarterback and not being an elite-level quarterback. It's ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. I'm sorry. Uh, The level that the football was inflated to was apparently very close to the low end that they allow. So it's not like it's going to be a huge difference, but it might just be a little bit different in the, the comfort factor that he has. He'll get used to the new level of football eventually, I'm sure. But, again, what I'm getting at here, guys, is I don't really have a problem with the the fine. If the Patriots knew about it, they deserve to be fined, uh, and they deserve to have their draft picks taken. But... I don't, and again, I don't have a problem with Brady being suspended necessarily. Four games, I think, is kind of harsh, but at the same time, you're messing with the integrity of the game of football. So if you're going to do that, you kind of have to pay the penalty for it. But I just, uh, the problem that I'm going to have here, and I I know it's going to be a common thing, and you're going to see me probably tweeting about it quite a lot, is that people are going to say that this is the reason that the Patriots were good. It's not. Other teams did this as well. This is not an unfair advantage that the Patriots had. It's possible that for this specific game against the Colts, the Colts may not have messed with the football PSI. Or maybe Andrew Luck, the level that he likes the football at, just happens to be within that range. But there's no doubt that other teams deflate the footballs. There's no doubt that other quarterbacks possibly have inflated the the football past the level that it would be otherwise recommended to be at. So, again... Don't talk about how this is going to be the difference between these guys being great and not. It's not. And it's not anything where the Patriots had a real unfair advantage. It just isn't. Personal opinion on all these things. I want to hear what you guys have to say, though, in the comments section below. What do you guys think about this? Does this taint the Patriots' legacy? Or do you think that given the fact that other teams have admitted to this, it's really not that big of a deal? Um... Also, do you guys think that the suspension is too much? Do you think that the fine is too much? Do you think that the fact that they took away two draft picks is too much? I'm interested in hearing what you guys have to say. Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you guys, as always, for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.